One of the hardest things in stock market is to admit that yes, a trade went wrong and I lost money. The second hardest is to probably see money on the table, not book profits and then see it evaporate. Believe me when markets are at all time high and our portfolio is not the very feeling that you get when you see everyone around you minting money, but you are stuck with something that you bought six months, one year back, maybe a small cap, mid cap, which has not gone anywhere, maybe down a bit. Or maybe if you bought something like a HDFC bank or maybe a newer stock like Nika, Tata Technology, ultra large caps like ITC, HUL recently, and then they have fallen 15, 20%. Great stocks, but down a lot from their recent highs. So when you are in the middle of rampant bulls, yes, we are in the middle of a bull run. It hurts. In this video, we'll talk about how we can rescue ourselves from this kind of precarious situation and still make a little money via a concept called tax harvesting. Tax harvesting has several flavors. We'll talk about some of them. The first one is using long-term capital gains delivered provided by income tax rules. You are allowed to book 1 lakh worth of profit in equity and equity linked mutual funds in a financial year without having any tax liability. So if you're sitting on some gains on some equity, some mutual funds, then book the profits now up to 1 lakh. You will not incur taxes and you buy them again next day. Your old stock, which has crossed one year boundary has been sold now, leading to an LTCG, which is exempt from taxes. Note that if you go beyond 1 lakh, then income beyond 1 lakh will come taxable at a long-term capital gains tax of 10%. Do remember that selling today and buying tomorrow carries a market risk where the markets may run up in the morning because of some event and you might actually lose some money, but hopefully it will not be worth at least 10%, which is your saving. Note that for long-term capital gain, if you are applying indexation, the income tax becomes 20% plus says not 10%. So use the option wisely whether you want to apply indexation or not, depending upon how your income tax is coming out. Also 10% is on equity and equity linked mutual funds only. Things like gold attract a long-term capital gain of 20% plus says, which is 20.8%, not 10%. Short-term capital gain is applicable for something that you have bought for less than one year. It has two flavors. One is you have already booked certain profits and are liable for a short-term capital gain of 15%. So if you are sitting on losses in some mutual fund, some equity, and now this may become even more applicable if markets correct in the coming days. So you sell those equities or those mutual funds and then you buy them again tomorrow, like I explained earlier. That way the older stocks, which was expensive has been sold now. It is offset against the profit that you have made earlier. And that means lesser income tax due for you. The holding cost comes down. You have booked losses. However, you have saved 15% on the taxes on the profits you have booked earlier. The offsetting does not have any limit in how much you can offset in any year. But yes, you are offsetting profit with booked losses. So your net capital is reducing when you book losses. If the quantity is very high and if you have to sell and buy tomorrow, you might not want to take risk. So you might do it over several days. So for example, sell 20% today, buy 20% tomorrow. Remember, if you do that in one single day, if you sell and buy same day, it will become speculative trade and speculative trade is not going to be offset against short term capital gain. The money will be taxed at your normal tax rates. Also note that long term capital gains and short term capital gains cannot be offset against each other. LTCG profit can be offset against a LTCG loss only. Similarly, an STCG loss can be offset against an STCG profit only. I talk about the second flavor, which is obvious. If you have booked any losses in the past, and if you are booking any profit now, then those will be offset against each other. Again, reduced income taxes. Also note that FNO does not come under these kind of offsets and trades. It is neither LTCG nor STCG. FNO gains or losses come under profit and gains from business and profession. These cannot be offset against STCG or LTCG at all. Yes, they can be offset if you have other business income. For example, if you are a consultant working somewhere and if you have earned money somewhere and if you have lost money in FNO, you can offset these. Do check with your CA on how your return is being filed and the user proper heads to file these. Otherwise, you'll end up with a problem. One thing that you will definitely want to attempt is time the markets. 
it is close to impossible but there are certain best practices that i have learned over time i'll share what i do as a learning for educational purpose do it at your own risk this is not an investment advice one thing i do is whenever i have to do tax harvesting i sell somewhere between 3 pm and 3 30 pm and buy it as soon as possible on the next calendar day i avoid overlapping holidays for example i would not sell on friday and wait for a monday to buy similarly if there is a stock market holiday i avoid selling on the previous day this is to ensure there is no interference from a large external event like a ukraine war i think which broke over the weekend i try not to short sell in a bull market which is the case right now if i have 100 quantity of a stock i'll buy 50 more or 100 more and then next day i will sell this way i avoid being trampled by the bulls this strategy can be reversed if you are in a bear market make sure you are managing your limits well you need to have money in your account next day to buy the stocks again in the morning so if you have sold something at 315 today the money needs to be available as limit or as extra money in your account tomorrow morning else you will not be able to buy again if you are a pro you will probably not be watching this video still you could also use options market to hedge your risks i'll not go into the detail of that part in this video at all but again you need to be a professional with a clear understanding of the underlying risk and how options work if you want to use that strategy a lot of large players including fno to my understanding use this strategy especially towards the options expiry where they hedge their positions using options and they sell in cash market for example that will lead to a crash but they will not lose the money they will use options to recover the loss in the cash market last suggestion from my side is don't wait for last week of march most of the people actually have practiced tax harvesting in March last week and it becomes really volatile, becomes very difficult. It may turn out to be really beneficial for you or a very loss making situation for you. My suggestion is you start doing it right away. Especially what you might want to do is if there are four or five days of bull run, market has increased, then you might want to capitalize on that. You could take a little bit of risk if you want to in your own capacity. That is your decision where you might want to sell, maybe wait for two days, three days of correction and then buy. That is a trade that is not going to help if the markets continue their up move remember that bulls are merciless with the bulls when they are on a rampage similarly with bears when they are on a run they beat down bulls like anything you don't want to get caught into their fight let's go through a couple of case studies which will emphasize on the points i just made the first example is of hdfc this is something i have done recently so i was waiting for hdfc to go beyond 1700 that was my resistance level that if it goes beyond that number then i'll assume that hdfc has broken the range and now it will go up so i bought certain quantity of hdfc but as soon as the Q3 results came, all held, broke loose, HDFC fell like anything. Right now it is off 20% from its recent peak. So what I am going to do probably, I am not going to take the risk of selling and buying again because there is a lot of upgrades from many buying houses. What I'll do in the next few days is whenever there's a slight fall in HDFC bank, I'll buy say 100 more quantity of it. And when it goes up a bit or maybe the next day itself, I'll sell the previous 100 quantity which means the older stock will get sold the higher price one my holding price will come down and whatever loss i book i'll make 15 percent of tax gains stcg on that trade if you are in the same situation there will be several options for you one is you are still confident with hdfc bank in the long run so you just do what i just explained you buy and sell or you sell and buy the next day. You could also be an, a little adventurous. You do the transaction today and wait for a few days for a favorable trade and make a little bit extra. To, in today's bull run, one thing I would definitely not advise is that you stay out of the market, which means you sell your position, you are on cash and you wait for a correction. This is a very dangerous situation in a bull market to stay out with cash in hand. But if you are doing that, you should also have the answer to one question. If your stock or if the market in general crashes by 10, 20, 30, 50 percent in the next week, then what will you do? How will you get cash to buy more or average down? What that means is at this stage in market, you should not be 95, 98 percent invested in the market or you should have another option to raise money very quickly if there is an opportunity in the market. Next case study is about Tata Technologies. If you bought the stock in IPO, you would still be in profit. If you bought it recently, you would probably be in slightly loss or no profit, no loss kind of zone. Note that Tata Technologies is a stock which is slightly different from other stocks which I have talked about because in this particular case, the anchor book holders have an expiry or end date of 5th of April after which their lock-in will expire. They'll be allowed to sell. What that means is on 5th of April, which is just after the starting of next financial year, a lot of Tata Technologies stock may hit the market where people want to book profits because they'll be early holders. 
So stocks like Tata Technologies or the ones which I've listed recently are a special case. Watch out for when the initial buyers, say employees, etc. have their exit dates a week, 10 days before that date in anticipation of a large fall. Lot of retail investors also start shorting in the cash market, which means they start selling their holdings that once the quantity hits the market, the stock will fall. I'll buy at 10, 15, 20% lower price. Nike had similar situation. They use a bonus issue kind of mechanism to make sure that no one sells right as soon as the date uh, comes into play picture. Some people did not like the idea, but that's another conversation. One disclaimer, me and my family hold Tata Technologies from pre-IPO days more than a year ago. So hopefully after the anchor book date arrives, we'll also be allowed to sell. Tax harvesting went done consciously is a good opportunity to revisit your portfolio strategy. Maybe some mistakes, maybe some things that you thought will increase, some theory gone wrong. In usual practice, we don't exit those stocks and book losses. However, tax harvesting makes us consciously book those losses because we'll at least make 10 or 15% gains. We may enter the same trade again, or if we don't like the selection, it's a good time to exit those strategies at least for the time and get your money into better opportunities more suited for today's market. One side effect of tax loss harvesting is also the fact that whenever you have stocks and loss in your portfolio, it gives you a bad feeling. You feel depressed when you see those losses. Once that bad blood is out, offset against your profits and the holding price goes down, you start feeling a little better cheerful and the trades kind of reflect that positivity. Tax harvesting is perfectly legal by law. There is one more option for you. If you are booking a significant amount of capital losses this year, which are not enough to cover all your profits, which means there's a net loss, you can actually carry them till next four years in your balance sheet by your proper income tax filing. So consult your chartered accountant, whoever is handling your returns. If you have excess losses, you have to carry them in your income tax return. And next year, if you make profit, then you can offset them against the losses, excess losses that you booked this year. And next year, you'll end up with lesser taxes. This video is only for educational purposes to help you understand STCG, LTCG, the way you practice tax harvesting, the way you can save a little bit of tax. In general, I personally don't believe too much in tax saving. We should give our dues to the government. A small exercise towards the end of the year can save you significant amount of money, especially if the quantum of losses is very high in certain cases. But do consult your registered financial advisor or chartered accountant for the simple reason that income tax laws keep changing. And this video may not cover all the finer elements of income tax laws at this point of time. If you learned something new, do subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.